How's it going, everyone? This is Midnight Strike 3625 and before we get started on this album review, let me just say that I apologize for the lack of content recently in the last week and a half or so. I actually planned on getting this video done last week, but since I got a temporary job as a shelf builder at a warehouse that just finished up, I had to push it off until now. Hopefully my work-life balance won't be as bad as it was in 2014, 2015, 2016-ish. I'm going to try and focus more on the album reviews and the game reviews as soon as I get a capture card. So, without further ado, let's do a new album review of a not-so-new album, an album that came out last year in 2019, and that is Saint Asonia's Flawed Design. Now this is Saint Asonia's sophomore album, and as such it features a completely different tone from the first album. Where the first album was more hard rock, more one two more of a one-two punch that was in your face, sort of had some grunge elements here and there. Saint Asonia's second studio album takes it back a little bit, kinda of draws it back, focuses more on the production as well as the lyrical content. It definitely has some improvements over the first record in that front. However, that's not to say that the album is perfect, mind you, because it has a lot of things that it could have improved on, it could have capitalized on, it could have done better. To get started, the track names. That is one of my biggest pet peeves with this album. Not a single track name has more than three words in it, and that normally isn't a problem, but the track names in this album are pretty bland and generic. I mean, you got such such classics as Blind, Beast, Martyrs, Ghost, Sirens, Flawed Design, of course, being the title track. But aside from Flawed Design, there really <laughs> is a lot of single word tracks that are really easily forgotten. I mean, I know the melodies, I know the structure of the songs, and I know pretty much all the lyrical content when I listen to it and I can identify it, but sometimes I just forget the names because they're just that bland and generic. For example, Beast could have been named This Beast Inside. You know, elongate the names a little bit, make it a little bit more memorable. And I suppose that, coming from me, is a little bit of a nitpick, but it's definitely a prevalent theme with the album itself. Moving on, this album, like I said, came out last year in a slew of other epic and great albums. Um, last year was a very good year for albums with such classics as Korn's The Nothing and Dream Theater's new album and of course the albums by Killswitch Engage and Tool respectively. So it was a very good year for albums and this one, when compared to all the other albums that came out in 2019, it's still decent and it's still very good in its own right, but it does fall flat from some of the classics that came out and I know I'm saying classics about albums that are less than a year old, but I digress. So when it comes to the tracks on this album, some of the first things that I notice, as I said in the intro, is the lyrical content is vastly, and I mean vastly, improved over the first album. In the first album, he was basically talking about how he was upset, he left Three Days Grace, they were all mad at him, he's in a better place without them around. Um, your fairy tale, you play the victim again, I mean, just stuff like that. You're the king of nothing. So it all came off as very pretentious, but we understood it due to the fact that most people were actually on Adam Gantier's side when he left Three Days Grace and formed Saint Asonia. But that's all in the past. That was kind of to get it out of the way. And Adam came back with Saint Asonia with their second record and focused a lot more on like emotional struggles, depression, anxiety, stuff like that, different hardships, and it's definitely more downbeat than the previous album. It also has better production. It's sleeker, it sounds smoother, and they use a lot more uh, vocal effects and just effects in general to their advantage. So I think as an album, this is actually better, but the songs in general, I actually prefer the songs on their first record given the fact that I like more of the hard rock and heavier aspect of, um, of that album, the first album. One thing that I would say is a highlight on this album is, of course, the song that they did with Sully Erna, and that is The Hunted. That is more of an in-your-face, 
hard rock song. It's very simplistic in its structure. Not much for solos. It has a little tiny, teeny tiny solo in there. But as far as, is it by Godsmack or is it by Saint Sonia? I actually had to wait until the end of hearing it on the radio in order to make that distinction. Until they said, hey, this is Saint Sonia's new song. At that point, I didn't even know that they were coming out with a new album, so there you have it. So this song, The Hunted, is a very hard song. It's a heavy song, and it's very simple, like I said, but it gets to the point. It gets very down to the point, and it's very fun to listen to. The vocal effects on Sully Erna's voice are very well used, and I think it's a very good song in terms of production. Much better, much cleaner than their first album, which featured, like I said, more of a grungy kind of production to it. Uh, a little bit more staticky. But as far as that goes, I think they did a very good job with picking this as the lead single. My only gripe is the fact that this album doesn't have any more of those songs. I mean, it has the very downbeat, laden, atmospheric elements going for it, but it doesn't have enough variety in that it makes it uh, come full circle, if that makes any sense. The first album definitely had better variation, it had more flow, and it had better song names, to be honest with you. I mean, there are a couple songs that I can name off the top of my head that I think are the highlights of this album. The Hunted is definitely the best song on the album, followed by Blind. Um, the Fallen is really good. Martyrs, Another Fight. Another Fight is a really good song. Sirens, he did a very good duet with a female vocalist. I can't, for the life of me, remember the name. I'm going to edit this video and put it right here just so that you guys know, like I did with the other Kill Switch Engage review when I couldn't remember uh, Chuck Billy's name. So those are my highlights, and I think this is definitely a must-buy when it comes to uh, Saint Sonia fans and Adam Gante fans in general, um, especially due to the fact that Three Days Grace was one of the best bands from that period, the alternative rock bands, and they have some of the best lyrical content as well. And it was very sad to see Adam go, but of course now we have two bands, Saint Sonia and Three Days Grace, which in my opinion hasn't been doing as good. All in all, this is a pretty decent album. Is it better? than St. Sonia's self-titled debut? It's arguable, but in my opinion, I would say no. There are things I like better about this album, but if you gave me a choice between the two, which one I would want to listen to at any given time, I would probably pick the first album, just because it has a little bit more of a variation and variety of softer songs and heavier songs. So I'm going to give this album probably an 8.5 out of 10. It is very decent. It's worth a listen, and if you are a fan of Three Days Grace or St. Sonia, I would give this one a check out, give it a listen. This is Midnight Strike 3625, keep calm and rock on.